El Shaddai International Christian Center London is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. We are a multicultural church with over a thousand members from more than 55 different nations. Our meetings are family oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family and we look forward to seeing you soon. Hola, bienvenidos sean todos ustedes familia hermosa. Es de bendición que estemos todos juntos nuevamente. Los invito a disfrutar de la programación del día de hoy, que sé que será de mucha bendición para sus vidas. Somos sus pastores Estrella y mi esposo Ramson Mumba. It's such a joy for us to be able to come into your home and continue to share with you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ as we teach it with simplicity and understanding. Our prayer is that as we teach the word of God today, the spirit of faith will rise up on the inside of you and bring you to the place where you can walk into the fullness of your inheritance. And we look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. Tonight, I will be taught the word of God. And I boldly confess that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. And I will never be the same again because of the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living word of God. Therefore... I declare in the name of Jesus that this is my receiving day. This is my receiving day. And I expect a miracle today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We came to glorify your precious name. It's so good just to be welcome in your presence and stand before you without fear, guilt, shame, or inferiority because we are washed in the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I am anointed today to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. And I also thank you that these, your precious people, are equally anointed with an anointing of understanding and courage to hear and to do your word. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Lord, today we choose to get wisdom. And in all of our getting, we get understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, please. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6. We have been studying this subject of setting boundaries in relationships. And today we want to look at setting practical boundaries. Because we understand that your life must have parameters that define where you begin and where you end. If you do not understand that concept, especially as we began this morning, talking about the law of abundance, how it is our debt to walk in love towards one another, you will confuse your love walk with your responsibility to make sure that nobody is taking advantage of you. So what we want to do is be very, very clear because remember, again, it bears repeating, that most people who will come in your life will have an agenda. And you must understand that you owe it to yourself to make sure that not only are you surrounded by people that believe the best about you, but also people that bring out the best in you. And as we began to look at this, the book of 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, as we were joking this morning, let me say it like the old preacher, the first epistle to the Corinthians the sixth chapter and the 19th verse. Sounds so odd. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. 
It says, don't you know <laughs> that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Say this up to me. My body, my body. is a temple, a not a woodshed. Come on, say it again. My body, my body. is a temple, a not, a not a garbage can. Amen. Don't let nobody just dump on you in the name of Jesus. No, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. You are so awesome. You are so valuable that God thinks you are worthy to house him. He's ready to live on the inside of you because that's how excellent you are. So tonight, I want you to settle this. Never ever put a downer on yourself. You understand the colloquialism. Don't, don't ever act like you are worthless. Do not diminish yourself because in God's estimation, you are so good that he literally feels comfortable to dwell in you. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Now, look at this. He said, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and you have been bought with a price. Verse 20, therefore glorify God in your body. Now, this introduces us to the concept that there is something that we call boundaries. There are boundaries because we are looking at a piece of property. We're not just looking at something that anybody can lay claim to. Like when you buy a home, you get a title deed. And that title deed corresponds with all the things that are outlined on your property. But if you do not understand that now you have a right to keep out intruders from your property, you will be like some people who would let another just rob them and destroy their property. And in the name of walking in love or in the name of being a Christian, just say, no, peace, brother, I'm a Christian. You know, just throw the stone through my window. That's not the way it works. You have a responsibility to make sure that you are an excellent steward of your life. Uh, your life is such a sacred trust that you just can't just give it to anybody. Please listen to me very carefully. When, when you are young, you kind of don't know your worth. So you let people take, care, take advantage of you. You must realize the dignity of human life. You must understand the value that God has placed on you. Uh, like we were talking about in, 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 in Nottingham yesterday with World Explosion, you, you don't even need permission to be distinguished. You were born distinguished. You don't need permission to be all that sophisticated and all that blessed. You were born with the blessing of God on you. And God said, let them have dominion. Let them have it. Just give it to them. And he gave it to you. And when he gave it to you now, the question is, will you take responsibility for it? So say this after me, I decide to take ownership and responsibility for my life. Now go to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 3, please. And verse 20, the scripture says, behold, <laughs> that means open your eyeballs. Don't be sleepy about this. Uh, there are two powerful words in the Bible. One of them is behold, the other one is beware. Okay, we'll leave that alone. But he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, it seems to me like Jesus is talking here. How do I know if Jesus is talking? It's in the red. Hello, somebody. Uh, but he stands at the door and he knocks. The door of your heart and he knocks. Please notice what did not happen. He didn't just come in. He respects you to the point where he will not just take over your life without your permission. He just won't do what he wants to do because he's God and he can do whatever he wants. No, 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 no. He's standing at the door and he is knocking. So if God will stand at the door of your life and knock, he would be courteous enough not to interfere without your permission, then why do you think it's wrong for you to expect people to have the courtesy to ask for your permission before they interfere with your life? If God who made you 
thinks that you have such a divine right to be respected that he will stand at the door and notice he didn't say whether or not you like it, I'm going to come in. No, he said, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. But the, the, this is all predicated. It's all dependent on your allowing this event to come to pass. If you don't open the door, he probably will turn around and go where he was going anywhere. That means God expects you to either open or close the door to your life. Here is a question. Do you even have a door? <laughs> yeah, because you thought I'm going to say, is your door open or closed? No, some of you don't even have a door, much less open it or closed. You don't even have it. You removed it because you just wanted everybody to show up. You are friendly. And now you are so hurt and damaged. Every man and his dog, hello somebody, just comes into your house and takes your things. And then you say, oh my God, I don't know why I am emotionally depleted. You let somebody come and dump on you. They are nonsense. Now you're carrying burdens that you didn't have to carry. Because you didn't understand, you must have a door. So let's define a boundary once again, and then we will go practical again. We said a boundary, in its simplest sense, is a property line. It's a property line that denotes or signifies the beginning and the ending of something. A boundary in its simplest form, is a property line. It shows you where you begin and where you end. If you don't know where you begin and where you end, you will be given responsibility for things that have nothing to do with you. You will be feeling bad for things that shouldn't even make you feel bad, and you will be unmoved by things that should really be your business because it works Either way, you, you've seen some people who are so just, some people are not, are not with us. You understand what I mean by that? They are here, but they are, hello. Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery, and instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in His body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have a blood-bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. A boundary shows you where you begin. It talks about ownership. It talks about responsibility. It talks about freedom. It talks about what you are supposed to be indicted for. It gives you the liberty so that if you don't protect yourself, you then don't have anybody to blame. Here is where we're going. I don't want you to live a life of a victim. Yes, we all don't choose the circumstances of our birth, but after you're 18, after you've grown up and you can, the Bible calls it the age of responsibility. Uh, let me put it this way. Paul writes to the, to the Romans, he says something that is really, it sounds, it sounds really strange, but follow the thought. He said, uh, I was once alive, in the book of Romans, I believe the seventh chapter. But then the law came and I died. Uh, but, but the question is, if you were once alive and then the law came and you died, 
I can't understand how a dead man can be writing a book. Because I don't get no books from the graveyard. The folk that are dead are not publishing anything. So obviously he wasn't talking about physical death. He was talking about when he was a child and his conscience was clear and pure before he reached the age of accountability and he could be indicted as a responsible human being by his wrongdoings. He was alive until the law showed him, now you're wrong, and when he broke that law, he died. That's a deep class. We'll leave that alone. But look at this. What it literally means is you are supposed to protect your life. Somebody says, what, what's up with all this protecting of your life? If you haven't lived long enough, let me tell you, uh, every man and his dog wants to take a chunk out of your life. Somebody says, why? It's just the way it is. That's like asking, why does the sun rise up in the east? I wouldn't take that class. Why? Because it, it still will rise up in the east. That's like a guy saying, I just, I, I just wish there were no bills. I won't waste my time. There will always be bills. Okay, okay, you're done looking. It, it, but, but look at this. It's about making sure that you own the stuff. So last week we began to talk about several things. We talked about what needs to happen in order for you to develop boundaries. We said, number one, you need to develop the, the, the ability to be emotionally attached to others and yet still not give up your sense of self and freedom to be apart. You need to be able to be emotionally attached, but don't lose yourself. Don't lose your identity in an attempt to relate. If you get into a relationship, you forget who you are. That's an unhealthy relationship. Uh, I think I used the illustration of The Runaway Bride. You remember that movie? Anybody watch movies in this church? If not, I'm going to stop, stop preaching and we'll put on a few good men. That's a good movie right there. Is that a good movie? That's a good movie. I like the, I like the oratory of, 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 of Jack Nicholson. Glory to God, man. I, I played that thing five, six times listening to it. I love it when people use words good. Amen. But, but, but guess what? Any of you watch movies? Let me see your hand. The rest of you, I strongly suggest you get born again. Amen. But, 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 you know, in, in Runaway Bride, we, we find Julia Roberts. Amen. And every time she got into a relationship, she ate the eggs exactly the same way like the man she was with. She had literally never found out how she liked her eggs because she adopted herself to the man that she was with. Now, yes, when you are in a relationship, there'll be give and take, but don't lose yourself trying to please somebody else. All of a sudden, you, you, you start looking differently to the way that everybody's known you. You are changing too much too soon. I'm preaching better than you are in many. So you need to develop the ability to form that emotional connection, and we'll deal with this, because next week I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you uh, 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 a test to see whether or not you are whole. We're going to find out how broken are you. Because the, tra the, the truth of the matter is most people look like you got it together. But oh dear God. So next week we're going to give you an actual test. Are you going to show up? Yes, sir. Ne next week, so yeah, I ain't showing up. I'm, I'm happy to deceive myself. No, 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 no. Next week, we're going to give you an actual test to see whether or not you are whole because you are not ready to relate if you are broken. Every issue in your relationship has to do with your own brokenness. I'm going to say it again. Every issue in your relationships has to do with your own brokenness. It is because the people in the relationship are not whole. That's why relationships are not whole. People say, well, there's something wrong with, 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 with just, you know, relationships. No, there isn't. What's wrong with relationships are the people. Thank you for your enthusiasm. So once we fix the people, we can have excellent relationships. 
Number two, we said you have to develop the ability to say no, the appropriate no, without feeling or fearing the loss of love. Some of you, you are in a relationship where if you said no, that's it, you're in the doghouse. You get the silent treatment or you get the anger, they manipulate you. Hello, somebody. Or they use the other, the, the softer one. You hurt me. <laughs> or, or either anger or you hurt me. Both of them are manipulation techniques. Wow. One of them is much more frightening. The other one emotionally gets you. But both of them are trying to achieve the same objective. Right. Usually the man will be frothing at his mouth angry. But the woman will be like, it's so unfair. I'm preaching better than you are, amen. Don't worry, I'm going to get to you. I'm just kind of fumbling around, setting the stage, but we're coming to where you are today. But either way, you do what you do because it works. Yes. Number three, we said, you have to develop the ability to take other people's no <laughs> without withdrawing emotionally. Some of you... You want everybody to respect your boundaries, but you don't respect anybody's boundaries. You want people not to just put their two pennies worth, you know, stick their beak in your business, but you can't take their no. Your whole deal is, I'll say what I want to say, and you can't tell me I can't. Uh-huh. Listen, every time you don't respect other people, you lose your, the right to be respected. Every time you don't respect other people, you lose the right to be respected. Why? Because, listen, you do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, what I want to do again as we talk about specific boundaries is this. This, this is very important because when the, the great misunderstanding when you talk about boundaries is people think they should put boundaries on others. No. You cannot put boundaries on someone else. That is control. I'm going to say it again. When we talk about setting boundaries, we're not talking about you calling your neighbor and saying, let me give you a boundary. No, that is control. Don't attempt to control others because the greatest victory that you will ever have as a human being is self-mastery. All the external things will come second. Go to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 16, please. Proverbs chapter 16. And notice verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he that takes a city. He said, if you can get a hold of yourself, you are greater than somebody who conquers a city. And if you are slow to anger, you are better than the mighty. But look at it. The greatest victory isn't you trying to subjugate someone and put them in their place. Remember, I said that's not Christianity. Christianity is not about putting people in their place. Christianity is about you putting yourself in somebody else's place. That's Christianity. Every time you want to have something up on somebody, remember that you've stepped out of love, you've stepped out of your power, and every time you want to belittle to somebody and put them in their place, that's not God's way of doing things. God's way of doing things is you putting yourself in their place and then becoming a kinsman redeemer, a priest that can be touched with the feelings of their infirmities, and after identifying with them, then you can understand why they're doing what they're doing. Thank you so much for joining us again on today's broadcast. Our prayer is that the Word of God has ministered to you today and released an eternal deposit of God's goodness and divine plan into your life. And so until next time, this is Ramson and Estrella reminding you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom and in all of your getting, get understanding. God bless you.
Join Dr. Ramsam Mumba for his Word Explosion conferences that are being held around the United Kingdom throughout 2012. We were born to dominate. We were born to succeed and to rise up like an eagle. Come on, somebody. We were born to have mastery, and instead of fearing our future, we were born to shape it. Come and hear the uncompromising Word of God taught with simplicity and understanding in Loughborough on the 20th of October. If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have the blood bought right to have victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Your destiny is about to change and your life will never be the same again. For more information and to register, call us at 084-560-2270. Email info at elshaddai.org.uk or log on to our website at www.elshaddaitoday.com. Word Explosion 2012. Come and discover your destiny and enter into the realm of possibility. Admission is free. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.